Yeah, we can. You can. Brilliant. OK. And um, have we got an indication as to how many people have seen this presentation previously? I will check that with you shortly. I, I will check that for you. Um, right. So hi, everyone. Thank you for attending our virtual classroom today. Um, today's virtual classroom is in collaboration with Hogan Legal. And today we've got on the call Peter. Um, hi, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Good evening, everybody. Um, right. Without further ado, I'll run you through this um, as quickly as possible. And I'm happy to take any questions you know, as we're going along, because we'll cover a few different subjects. Um, we have run this session previously, so for those of you that have seen it before, I do apologise, but it will probably aid as a bit of a recap for you. Um, so what I'm going to talk about in the main is more about inheritance protection rather than individual sort of will powers of attorneys and trust, because that the inheritance protection encompasses all of that. We're an award winning firm. We've won firm of the year five years in a row now um, for this type of business. And we specialize in particular in two main areas. And one is protecting people's homes again, being taken in for care fees. And the second is um, protecting people's inheritance from inheritance tax. Um, so I'll skip through the couple of slides here. So this very quickly tells you a bit about us in February 2016, following numerous meetings with uh, solicitors and barristers, I put together a specialist team who we could then take on the approach of what we call modern law, and that is take the firm out to visit you, the client, in the comfort of your home, rather than you know bringing you into an office. Lots of the team um, have more than 30 and 40 years experience in this line of business. Um, so hence the areas of expertise that we'll be covering. So just quickly to jump on, believe it or not, even following the COVID crisis, there are still seven out of 10 people who don't have a valid will up to date. Um, and this is absolutely staggering because most people, the problem with wills is we all think we're going to live forever and it's something that we'll do, you know, at some point in the future and then sadly never get around to it. So what I'm going to cover off this in this evening's presentation is a quick run through wills, explain the benefits of powers of attorney, the benefits of trusts, and we're going to touch on inheritance tax and probate. So what to look at is what exactly is included in somebody's inheritance or your estate? And that is absolutely everything that you own, the equity in your home, your collection of cars, any holiday homes or other properties that you own, your jewellery, business shares, um, any insurances that you have, uh, your cash and savings in the bank and building society and anything else of sentimental value. And a well prepared plan will protect against divorce and unsuitable partners, any remarriaging, bankruptcy, care costs, and so on, as per the slide titles. So there's a few figures here that are mega important for each of you to understand, because every single client that you meet on a daily basis, every one of them needs a will, right, and should have one in place. Um, and in relation to inheritance tax, these figures here explain the allowances that people have. So every single person on the planet has £325,000 of inheritance tax allowances. In addition to that, a number of years ago, the government were kind of put under pressure to increase that threshold and what they did was they gave the increase with one hand and they kind of took it back with the other. So they, they introduced it as what's called a property nil rate band on top of the basic inheritance tax allowances. And that was up to another 
£175,000 per person. So technically, that would give an individual £500,000 worth of allowances. And as a married couple, it would give you a total of £1 million. Now, anything that you own over that value is taxable at 40% when you pass away. So the importance of making a will, right, and reviewing them, right? So um, if people die without a will, the term that's used is that they've died in test state. And most families think, oh, well, everything will be just straightforward. Everything will just pass either from mum to dad or dad to mum. And that actually isn't quite the case. Um, and you can create a lot of hardship and aggravation for the family after you've passed away if you haven't had a will in place. And the first thing is that your spouse is only entitled to the first £320,000 of you of what you own, and then half of everything else. So to the taxman, basically, you're kind of leaving a door open for him to come and um, access your estate and extract as much money out of it as possible. The local authority, you're going to leave them with the opportunity to decide what happens to your property and to the actual family at large. And again, young people who actually pass away and they automatically think, oh, well, if anything happens to me, my sister or my brother would look after my children um, or my parents if they're still alive. Um, Without a will in place, believe it or not, that gets um, checked by the actual local authority and the social services to make sure that the family members are capable of actually looking after your um, children. So it's important that you specify that within a will. Children and grandchildren, you're leaving a lot of heartache again because they are trying to unravel the actual estate and sort everything out. The bank will basically freeze all the accounts. So it makes it almost impossible for the families to get at anything until they've got a grant of probate or in this particular case, it's referred to as a thing called letters of administration. So this flow chart here gives you a kind of a quick breakdown as to what exactly happens to somebody that passes away with a will in place or with a will not in place. Um, and most people are quite shocked when they start to read through all of this and how things get divided out. You'll note on the left hand side that this slide is slightly out of date because it says if it will leave your estate of 270,000, that figure was increased last year to 320,000. So reasons for making a will. First thing is it will determine who gets what and when. It avoids all the intestacy rules and then you get the option to appoint executors and trustees and guardians for any young children and it protects your assets and your loved ones. And it can help to reduce and eliminate inheritance tax efficiently. So if we look at just kind of a quick case study, happy standard family, dad has sadly passed away, his widow remarries and she then sadly passes away, right? How much of dad's hard earned inheritance do you think will go to his children? It's highly possible that none of it will because it has now moved to mum's second husband who's got no real like, care for the original children and has now sat on the original family's estate. Second case, again, sadly, dad passes away. The widow remarries, realises she's made a mistake and gets a divorce. Now half of the entire estate is going to the outgoing second husband. Right. And again, the children are losing out. Um, so uh, again, proper drafted will can protect against all of this. Next one is, Sadly, mum and dad died, the children inherit, right? At this stage, 
the daughter is married to the son-in-law from hell, they divorce, and half of the daughter's inheritance is now going to her outgoing husband. And again, this can deprive the actual grandchildren of their um, inheritance as well. Now, the next staggering thing to, to come across basically is, um, even down to today, there are over 400 homes a week being sold to pay for care fees. And on the front of the actual Daily Mail, these two stories were run um, a few years ago. So from there, the figures will have increased dramatically. But um, it's absolutely staggering to realise that every single week, over 400 homes are sold to pay for somebody who's gone into care when all of that could have been avoided. And again, sadly, one in three dementia victims are you know, forced to sell their home to pay for their ongoing care. Could all that have been avoided? Yes, it could by putting a trust in place. And the benefits of actually having a trust in place is right, it will remove, firstly, all the complications of probate. So any assets held in that trust means that they don't have to go through the long winded process and the cost of probate. So it saves the family time and money. The next thing it does is it protects against sideways disinheritance. Now, this is where if the children were to get divorced or even pass away, it, their share won't go to their partner. It'll automatically go down the family bloodline to the children. If they haven't got any children, it would then be divided back between their siblings. So again, this is a highly, highly, highly kind of um, popular subject with families you know, uh, across the country at the moment. Um, the next thing is it protects against bankruptcy and insolvency. So if any of the beneficiaries sadly were to find themselves out of work, you know, unemployed, looking at potential insolvency, the um, insolvency people can't touch the assets that are held in the trust. If you have a family member who's in receipt of disability benefits, the trust can't be means tested against their actual benefits, unlike an inheritance. If their inheritance, let's say from an ordinary standard will, drops into their bank account, their benefits will stop overnight. Um, whereas if it's held within a trust, it doesn't affect the benefits in the slightest. And the last thing is, which is mega important for lots of families nowadays is it protects the home and any other assets in the trust against care fees. So, oh, case study for a happy standard family again, sadly passes away. Mum goes into care. She's there for a long time. And how much of dad's inheritance tax uh, our inheritance goes to his children? So. Just to give you an indication in connection with care in particular, and that is the first thing that the actual and care homes, by the way, are costing anywhere between 800 and 1500 pounds a week. In fact, you can stay in a hotel for cheaper, but, but care homes, that's their actual set figures, and there are some that are even higher than those. So the first thing they'll do is they'll come after the family's money. Um, and they'll dilute that all the way down at a weekly rate, but until they get to twenty three and a half thousand pounds. At that point, you generally will pay a contribution towards the care fees um, until you get to fourteen thousand and then they'll come after the house. If the house is protected within a trust and any other assets as well, they can't touch them and they can't be forced to be sold to pay for the ongoing care. The local authority at that stage have to pick up the actual care costs and carry on uh, paying for the ongoing care of mum or dad. So what can you place within a trust? You can put your home, you can put savings. Can you draw an income from the trust? Yes, you can. Can you add and remove items? Yes, you can. So let's just go back to that slide for a second. The best way to picture in your mind, if ever you were explaining this to somebody in relation to a trust is, it's a bit like having a safe in your living room. And while you're alive, the only people that have the keys to that safe 
uh, yourself and your partner. You then have the trustees whose job is to keep everybody away from the actual safe until such time as you have both passed away. And then at that stage, their job is to pass the keys down to the beneficiaries. The beneficiaries then can decide what they want to do with the assets held in the trust. The trust will run for 125 years from when it's set up, so it will pass from generation to generation. Now, the next subject is powers of attorney. There are two types of power of attorney, one for your health and welfare and one for your property and finance, and they're both as important as each other. So. Let's look at another case study. Happy standard family. Sadly, mum's passed away. Dad goes into care. He's there for a long time. Bless him, he's got dementia. Right. And he's incapacitated. And how much of his inheritance is going to go to his children? Now, in this particular case, right, what happens is when people start to run out of money, some local authorities will suggest to families moving their parent to an alternative care home. And they'll use the word alternative rather than saying the word cheaper. Um, now, if you have a power of attorney in place, bearing in mind you have got the whole weight of the court of protection behind your decision making. And therefore, you can dig your heels in and say, I'm sorry, but you're not moving my mum or my dad to an alternative care home. They're comfortable where they are. They've been here for quite a while, so this document affords me the opportunity to overrule any decision that you'll make. So mega, mega important documents to have. <clears throat> so incapacity, relatives can't just walk into a bank and access your actual money if you've lost capacity. Now, um, we do run a little video clip here um, time to time. And but most people that I speak to nowadays are far more familiar with Kate Garraway off of television. And um, when during COVID, her husband basically ended up in a coma off the back of COVID, was in that for a long time, right? She thought she could carry on regardless and from a financial point of view and was horrified to realize that her bank accounts were frozen and she couldn't even get access to technically what was her own money, because not only do they freeze the individual bank accounts, they'll also freeze the joint bank accounts. And at that stage, you've got to apply to the court of protection to actually access technically your own money. So with a power of attorney in place, it avoids all that aggravation completely. Um, and it allows you to carry on um, as you normally would. Now, what the attorneys can't do is spend all the money in the bank account, but they are accountable and they can only pay out what you would normally have been paying, such as, you know, all the utility bills. You know, if you sent a gift of 20 or 50 pounds to family for their birthday or something like that, you can still do all of that sort of thing. Um, but what you can't do is say, I've been looking after mum or dad's affairs now for six months. I could do with a Caribbean cruise, so I'm going to take 15 grand out of the account. You can't do that. So this stage, we'd normally run the little video called the Heather Bateman story, which I'm going to skip past. Um, and the Heather Bateman story is a little bit like the Kate Galloway situation where her husband was out walking a dog, got knocked down in a country lane, was in a coma. She basically couldn't access any of the bank accounts and had to apply to the court of protection for permission. She had children who were attending university and the university fees, as you can imagine, are far more than £500. So when she applied to the court of protection, they gave her an, an allowance of she could draw funds up to the value of £500. Anything over that should have to go back to the court of protection for permission to do it. Now, if any of you have ever spent any time liaising with the court of protection, you'll know it's not something that you can say, oh, I'll pop down to the court of protection tomorrow just to get more permission. You have to apply for a hearing, wait for it to be granted and then go. So there can be weeks and weeks go by. Power of attorney 
mega important document, cuts all of that out of play. There are two types, just as we said, there's one for property and finance, and there's one for your health and welfare. So that's basically it as far as wills, powers of attorney and trusts are concerned in relation to inheritance tax and capital gains tax. We're partnered up at the Barristers Chambers in London. We've got two barrister intermediaries, Lloyd and Christian, um, and they generally tend to put the actual files together on behalf of the chambers. And we look at business and corporate corporation tax, any HMRC inquiries and investigations, inheritance and capital gains tax. And in most cases with inheritance tax uh, mitigation, we can get that figure down to almost zero and, and save the family quite a lot of money. Now, <clears throat> the next thing is, this is a slide we've added recently. Um, it's absolutely critical if you've got a life insurance policy that that policy is written in trust. And let me explain what happens if it's not. If you have a life insurance policy that is not written in trust and it pays out on your debt, that value of that policy gets added to your estate for inheritance tax purposes. And in some cases can take families over the threshold and they end up paying 40%. Whereas if the actual life insurance policy is written in trust, it does not form part of your estate for inheritance tax purposes, and it can be paid out to your beneficiaries immediately without even the need for a grant of probate. So if any of you have got life insurance policies in place, contact your provider to check that the policy is in trust. If it's not, tell them you want to have it put in trust. Um, it's absolutely critical. So general threats to people's estate and uh, and their wealth is divorce, spouses remarrying, any potential business failures, inheritance tax is the one where the vultures are waiting to take 40% of your estate when they can, um, care costs, people losing capacity and children remarrying. Your estate plan basically should cover a properly professionally drafted will. The benefit of a proper professionally drafted will is that it will generally carry professional indemnity cover so that if there's any challenge to the will, that policy can uh, come into play and protect the actual um, clients. Trust planning, the trust will run for 125 years from when it was set up. You need to look at inheritance tax and you know if there's an issue and if how to mitigate against all of that. You need your property um, powers of attorney in place to look after both your health and welfare and your property and finance and long term care. And obviously, you also need to consider your, what your funeral wishes are. Probate. Um, now, generally, when somebody passes away, depending on the value of their estate and the, the value of their assets, you may be asked for a grant of probate. And if you are, you bet they have to apply to the actual probate office, which takes months and months um, to get sorted. Um, the other thing is, which a lot of families are shocked by, and that is you get a lot of landlords that own uh, multiple properties, and while they're asset rich, they may be cash poor. And when they sadly pass away, their children have to apply for the probate to transfer the actual assets across and then are horrified to find out that you have to pay the inheritance tax first before you get the actual grant of probate granted. Um, and then, of course, you can't touch any of the assets right to sell those because you have to have a grant of probate. So you cut between a rock and a hard place trying to work out how you find the money to pay the inheritance tax. Again, just as a side issue, um, as part of the actual business, we sponsor a charity called TLC, which is for Teddy's for Loving Care. And every client that actually does business with us, we actually sponsor a Teddy to be um, presented to 
distressed children going into hospital. And as you can see, they're now carrying these on the air ambulance as well. And last year in Peterborough, the three million teddy bear was actually given. Not that we basically sponsored three million of them, but we certainly sponsored um, quite a number of them. So consultations, basically how we approach it is if you refer a client in or you are actually you know, interested in any of our services yourself, we generally have a three appointment system where on the first appointment, it is a free, no obligation consultation. We go through everything. We talk about the client's um, concerns. We'll make some recommendations. We will then come away and write to them to confirm what those recommendations are. At that point, if they decide to go ahead, we'll go back to a second appointment. We'll then take their instructions and half of the fees. And on the third appointment, we go back to have all the documents signed off and they pay the balance of the account. Once the client has paid the balance of the account, the following day, we pay you. Now, just a couple of things to bear in mind as well is that we're also members of the actual Society of Will Writers. All our solicitors are members of the Law Society and the Solicitors Regulation Authority, and therefore clients are well and truly in a safe pair of hands. Why choose us? We've got consultants across the country. We've been doing this for many, many years. Um, all our actual trust solicitors, are, in addition to normal uh, Law Society regulations, they're also step qualified. Um, and like I say, We've won firm of the year for five years in a row now, um, and we put client care first. And that's us. So any questions, anybody? Thank you so much, uh, Peter, for presenting that information to us. Um, as always, whenever we have a chat, you're always mentioning something that um, we're not previously aware of, which is really good because we're always adding uh, new knowledge and information into um, our minds that we can then uh, relay on to customers that we speak to as well. Um, so as always, um, I always start off with a question. So um, my question to you, Peter, is I have a life insurance policy. It's not in trust. So what? how would I go about putting that in trust? All you basically do is you contact the life insurance company. You say to them, I have a life insurance policy. This is the policy number, right? I'd like to have that policy put in trust, right? Mm -hmm. At that stage, they'll send you out a form. They'll ask you to appoint trustees. That's generally somebody who you can trust. Normally, um, what you would do is you'd follow the line of your will and you would a point whoever your trustees would generally be the executors of your will. Um, and then it'll also ask you to appoint beneficiaries. In other words, who's the policy to be paid out to in the event of you passing away? Um, and the big advantage to that basically is that sadly, when you'd pass away, there is no delay then on the release of the money out to the beneficiaries. OK, and just in addition to that, um, let's, for example, say that um, um i've got a mortgage um and that is that i pass away tomorrow i've i've got um 90000 left on my mortgage to pay uh and but i've got my life insurance policy which is then has has been placed in trust yeah and i've got my family members as trustees of that what will happen well the, generally there's a kind of a a rule of thumb in relation to who gets paid first. Um, so all your actual liabilities have to be cleared first before any beneficiaries receive the benefit of your actual estate. Um, and the first person in the queue is always HMRC. Now, the only thing you're allowed to pay prior to getting a grant of probate is anything to do with your funeral. And now, and when they say anything to do with your funeral, that's generally the actual funeral itself, any flowers. If you're having a wake, you can pay for the wake out of it. If there's a headstone to be purchased, that can be, you know, paid for the hearses, the limousines, 
anything related to the funeral, no problem. You can pay that out, but you can't pay anything else till you've got a grant to probate. OK, so that's even when you've got even when your li life insurance is placed yeah, in trust. You, li if your life insurance policy is like written in trust, all it means is it bypasses the need for the grant of probate to have the money released, but it still forms part of your estate. Now, lots of people make th this mistake time and time and time again, and that is they'll sit there and they'll say, Oh, when you're drafting a will, they say, yes, I'm going to appoint my son or my daughter as the executor to my will, which is absolutely fine. However, if by any chance that they make a mistake in the distribution of your estate, they are personally liable. Right? And therefore, right, they may have paid out the beneficiaries. Somebody comes, you know, out of the woodwork and says, by the way, you know, your mum owed me six thousand pounds and hadn't been paid, right? If they've overlooked it, right, then they are they personally have to pay that money. Mm. OK, so it's a bit of a minefield, as you can understand. So yeah. it's important that people get the correct advice. Hmm? Yeah, 100%. I agree. Yeah. Thanks for that, Peter. Um, OK, so we'll move on to our questions and we have a question from Orville. Hi, Orville. Yes, hello. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, I just need to ask, basically, because I, I, I didn't know that you guys do probate. <laughs> yeah. Really, because I've got a friend that, um, well, I've got, I know someone that um, their, um, their mom died and left the house um, and they need to apply for probate. Yeah. Um. Now, how much is your probate? How much is cost? Right. Um. We'll generally we'll look at the value of the estate and we'll fix the fee with the client. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is we have come across numerous clients where families like what you're talking about now are trying to sort out the probate, and the only thing they need was a bit of advice in how to fill out the probate application form. We never charge for that. Mm. So we'll sit there and say, look, what we'll do is we'll send you across a templated probate application form, right? Try and follow it to the best of your ability. If you're stuck, use us as a reference library, pick the phone up and ring us. However, if you want us to actually take on the whole probate case and sort it all out, we'll normally charge £500 plus VAT plus any disbursements. And the disbursements are normally the probate application fee, which I think up the top of my head is something like £270. Right, so, so that'll be about, so it's, that's £500 plus. Plus the £270, yeah. It so it would be about, pounds. yeah. And most people, when they quote you the price, they don't tell you that, you know, that they'll pass it off as saying, and disbursements. And, um, and that word disbursements covers a multitude of sins. Right. So any additional costs in relation to the fee for processing, right, they will apply. Right. OK. That's quite, just to add, Peter, that's quite a, a decent price as well. Yeah. From my understanding. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, get me, if we do what we call a full estate administration, right, we'll generally sit with a client and say, right, how big is the estate? Right. We'll charge a half of 1% to sort absolutely everything out, lock, stock and barrel, right? Um, and we've seen solicitors out there, and banks of worse, soli some solicitor firms have been charging 3%. Now, you'll sit there and you think, well, 3% doesn't sound that bad, really. You know, I'm going to get 97%. And you look at what 3% of an average estate being somewhere in the region of about Six hundred thousand pounds is, and now you're paying eighteen grand out in fees, and you think, what in God's name have you done for eighteen thousand mm -hmm. right. you know, so, pounds? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. and that's basically it. So go on. The other question is basically in terms of inheritance tax, um, because there's no will and you have to apply for probate. Now, will will you have to pay inheritance tax on the property? No. Right. 
The only time inheritance tax comes into play is now whether somebody has a will in place or whether they haven't, the inheritance tax threshold doesn't change. Right. So the first, let's say, £325,000 of their estate will not be subject to inheritance tax. OK. Now, in order to, to get the other 175000 there's a couple of little bits, um, caveats onto that. Right. And the first one is, A, you must own your own home. Two, you must have a, what's called a linear descendant, which means basically you must have a child. And then thirdly, your house must be worth £175,000 or more. Right, now, okay. So for a married couple, for both of them to get to £175,000, the house would need to be worth £350,000 or more. Mm. Right, right. This person yeah. I'm, that I'm that I'm mentioning, they yeah. do they they do not live in the UK, but um, they're not a citizen of the UK. But they their mum was, which yeah. own which own a property in a region of one hundred and seventy thousand or something like that. Yeah. So that's what I was asking basically. Yeah. So but, so she, but, she she can just apply for probate and and that's it. Then is that right? Exactly. And all the basically the only reason they need the probate is to transfer the asset into the children's name. Now, a prime example here is if that lady had a trust in place, they wouldn't need to apply for probate at all. Right. It would right. have automatically gone to them the following day. Right. OK, I see. Yeah. So it, and this is the big advantage of having a trust in place. You, you have no probate to be bothered about. Right, it just passes the assets straight over to the beneficiaries as an administrative exercise. Mm. So that the trust include a will. So if there are will, they don't need to apply for probate either. Is that right? Yeah. Well, if there's a will there, depending on the value of the asset, then they would have to apply for probate. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, the will doesn't remove the need for probate. A trust does. Mm. Right. Okay. Got you. Yeah, so you'll get lots of people and they'll say, right, I'm going to put my home in trust to protect that so that, God forbid, if I go into care, nobody can take it, right? It's protected from my children. And equally, if any of the children in time get divorced, the divorced partner can't get any share of that house. Everything else that I own, I'm going to cover in my will. And that will dictate what happens to that. So like my money, my cars, you know, um, and so on that then is recorded in the will document. All right, okay, that's fine. So the person, if if, if I'm going to have a word with the, with the individual, if they need to apply for probate, pro, what am I saying? Probate, yeah. probate, sorry. Then should I just go straight to the job bank and just um? You do, yeah. Do that. The, yeah, the okay. best thing to do is fill in the actual form, right? Put the actual contact details of you know who your colleague is. Right. Send that across to Tabor. Tabor basically then will send it to me and I'll contact them to make an appointment. But I will tell your, the client where I've got their name from. Yeah, OK. Like yeah. OK. So, Orville, what to do is once you've um, uh, spoken with your customer, if you then um, either if you know how to send through the lead form, fantastic. Or if you contact Shazib, he will yeah. then support you to send across that lead form and then Peter will get in contact with your customer. Is that all right? No problem. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your questions as well. Thank you so much. Um, you. Just to kind of help you all going forward, right? Sometimes if you talk about wills and talk about powers of attorney and trusts and stuff, right? Because there's so much to take on board, it flies over people's heads, right? And I always find instead of making statements, if you ask questions right you make people stop and think so the question normally would be right you know has your mum and dad protected their property against potential care fees the answer is probably not if not are you aware that there's a way of saving that house god forbid if either of you went into care right the other thing is as a course of like whatever not business you do Every single client that you see needs a will. Have you got one? 
is it up to date and does it properly protect your family all right these are just the loose questions that you would ask and then if people say no say look you know we provide a complete not a free will review now just for the benefit of everybody on here right there are times that i've gone out to see clients and I've looked at their will documents and I've looked at their power of attorney documents and I've looked at their trust documents and I've said to them, everything you've got is 100% perfect. If anybody ever tells you you need something, they're lying to you. Right? Um, and, that's and now they've now had a complete free independent review of what they've got. It's cost them nothing and it's one favour for you. Right? So to that end, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Peter. Do we have any more questions for Peter with regards to anything that um, Peter has explained to her, to us today? Or uh, if you do you have anything that you would like to discuss, any potential customers that you've got in mind? Any question that you may have? Yes, I've got a question. Yeah. Yes, Pete. Um, Pete, in regards to, like you said, when the client gets in touch with you initially, you go out and do a visit. Is do you, uh, basically do you need leads in the local area then, or can nope. you take right. nationwide I'll take leads yeah. anywhere in the UK? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's what I just that was all I wanted to ask. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So, um, uh, Peter Peter has uh, said to us um, that he will travel anywhere in the UK. So if you have even if you've got a lead which, which you think is 200 miles away from you, um, Peter, you'll, yeah. you'll be OK yeah. to fly but, to fly across. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my helicopter landed in the back garden. Right. Um, all joking aside, ju just for the benefit of everybody, we've got clients in Cornwall. We've got clients down in Kent. We've got clients up in Norwich. We've got clients in Newcastle, Carlisle. Right. We've got clients in Wales. Right. We literally have clients all over the country. Right. And um, I always like to sit down with the client face to face and go through everything, because at the end of the day, the only thing that's important is their wishes and their peace of mind. Fantastic. So we've got one more question now yeah. from Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, yeah, I'm having a, hi, yeah, I'm having a, like a uh, like a two questions. I just wanted to know, like uh, I'm just a little bit confused. That's a new portion for me. Yes. Like uh, how you want support from recruiters and how you will be supporting to recruiters and why the people are going to tell for recruiters, they can go directly to the lawyer or agents. So how Stanley? in this scenario? Yes. Stanley. So um, with Job Bank, as uh, when you attended the induction with me, you went yeah. through recruitment, marketing and shop. So Will's That's probate good. family allocation trust falls under marketing. So we're marketing okay. a service. OK, yes. OK, so we yeah. are not classed as just uh, being recruiters. We are, in a sense, we're business consultants because we are dealing with a number of uh, we're dealing with a number of different things. Okay, fine. Yeah. This is the marketing uh, side. This is yes, full. that's right. Okay. Okay, so you, you feel free to ask your question. Yeah. Do you have another question, Stanley? Hey, no, because that's uh, like a government website. They can just because that I'm just getting confused because a lot of people they go for gov.uk and they can go directly with other lawyer or something. So how they are going to contact it to us, like sort of anything, the people. So okay. because they are doing the like recruitment side because we don't have any sort of an other sort of aggregations or something like that because we are not like a, um, FCA members or something like that. So why no. they have been contacted to the recruiters? Stanley, just to kind of put your mind at rest, first of all, right, um, this is not regulated in relation to the provision of wills and powers of attorney. Trusts, different matter, because that's what's called reserved activities, and that they can only be produced by solicitors. 
Now, the next thing is you're quite right on what you've said. You know, somebody could go to the local solicitor by all means if they will. However, what you generally find is your average high street solicitor is a bit of jack of all trades and a master of none. And while he'll do a bit of conveyancing, a bit of accident, a bit of debt recovery work and so on, right? He won't be a specialist in relation to trusts and protecting people's homes from care fees, nor inheritance tax. Um, and that's what we look at in relation to the family. The other thing that's very important as well is that as a company, not only are we respectful of the UK laws, we're also respectful of Sharia law right, for Asian families, um, because depending on the age of the client and the generation, different family levels have different views on how they'd like the estate distributed. And in some cases, you know, you'll get mum and dad say, no, I'm happy for the estate to be divided between my four children, but it must be as per Sharia law. And then we'll go, yeah, that's absolutely fine. We'll record all of that in the documents. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Stanley. Any more questions for Peter? Yeah, just one more question. Yeah. In terms of marketing this, can we can we set up like um a dedicated funnel or something on our home to, to market it on our home, like on Facebook or Facebook yes, adverters. If, if you want to add on to your services that you're providing estate planning services, right, and doing wills and so on, you can do. And you, if somebody says to you, how are you doing that? You, you, your answer is we're doing it in association with Horgan Legal Limited. Right. Because you're not giving the advice we are. Right. Mm. So, so like in every every call that I that we have, I always mention that we're not professionals in um in anything to do with uh, legal services. All that we are doing is marketing a product or service. So when we speak to our customers, we can give them the basic knowledge that we have. But when it's more technical, what we'll do is we'll put the details onto a lead form and we will send it through and Peter will pick that up and then he can have that conversation with them because he's the qualified expert. David, just something else to add in to some of your, um, you know, the attendees here, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, um, I also provide this seminar to groups of people all around the country. So for argument's sake, if you're a member of an organization that would like somebody like me to come along and do a free talk to the group, right, we'll happily do that. Now, any leads that are generated off of that talk, right, are all related to your account. Yeah, fantastic. So again, it, um, for everyone on this call today, if you feel as though you've got a group of people that would uh, benefit from um having this presentation presented to them um somewhere maybe somewhere local to you or somewhere even if it was like online like an online coffee morning thing you know just arrange something with them and if it would if it would benefit a group of people and then we can arrange it with peter and peter would be more than happy to to join us absolutely so if there is anyone who is looking into doing anything like that lee is with us um, and let's uh, get something booked in. OK, um, do we have any other questions for Peter? OK, so um, Peter, the session today again, really beneficial, really knowledgeable and um, anyone who um, isn't comfortable speaking on the call uh, now, if you guys want to contact myself separately or your business coaches, um, we can then guide you and support you to send across your query to Peter and then Peter will be in contact. But um, the session has been fantastic once again. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. My it's pleasure. been an absolute it's, an, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and um, hopefully, um, Peter, you'll uh, come back uh, uh, on a in another couple of weeks and do another session with us. That'd be great. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Peter.
Thank, thank, thank you. Very interesting. Very interesting. Enjoy the rest thank of your you. evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And God